everybody, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Sense, our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. This is a very highly requested video. I'm dedicating it to my girl Kia, aka Yummy411. If you're not following her, please do so. So let's talk about what the house of Marc Jacobs is for me. So Marc Jacobs is not the biggest house. It's not the most sought after house that I've ever, you know, heard about. To me, when I think about Marc Jacobs, I think about brilliant marketing, cult following, and pretty. All things pretty. So they created a scent how many ever years ago called Daisy. I've never owned it. I've never smelled it. But it instantly developed a cult following and someone in that on that team or maybe it was Mark Jacobs himself I don't know anything about whoever Mark Jacobs is if it is a real person I'll be honest um, came up with this idea that every season they were gonna come out with a new line and these lines include also oh fresh just a regular um, a love and a dream not every line has all four. Some lines only have two. Some have three. It is what it is. I'm going to talk about the ones that I have and I'll briefly mention the ones that I sold or gifted away and why. So this video might run rather long. I apologize in advance. The other thing about Marc Jacobs with it being pretty is the fact that these aren't earth shattering, life changing fragrances. These are beautiful signature scents for spring and summer. They're cute. They're floral, fruity, little woody. They are just the perfect blend of all those things. And they are a collector's dream. These bottles, you know, unless you think that the tops are gaudy, if you're one of those people, then okay, then it might not be for you. But I fell for that bug, that marketing that I was talking about, where I was like, I got to have them all. If they have three in there and they have four in there, I got to have them all. Now, what I did realize is that I wasn't a fan of the dreams normally. They had things like wisteria in them. And I was just like, meh not for me. So I'm a huge lover of the loves. I'll be showing you the different bottles as we talk about them. They are the sweetest of them all. I'm not a fan of the Oso oh Freshes, which are the ones that I've gotten rid of mostly because they're just too light, too watered down. And then the regular ones tend to bring a little bit more weight to them. So anyway, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. The first one I'm going to talk about is Marc Jacobs Daisy Twinkle. So this was launched or released in 2014. I just found out about it last year and purchased it. This is probably my least favorite flanker series. This is what I would call the regular flanker when you have a, a line. There's the dream, there's the oh so fresh, there's the love, and this is just the regular one. This is wild berries, violet leaves and then like some woody notes in the base that kind of sort of make it creamy now i used to own the oh so fresh which i talked about previously and i sold it on macari because i noticed that i only wore it to sleep and as many of you know i don't really like to wear fragrances to bed because i like to give my nose a rest you know so it was so light it was so watery i believe that the oh so freshes are that's how i describe them they're very watered down Still light, still pretty, still beautiful for everyday signature scents for spring and summer, but they're very unassuming. They're for the woman who doesn't really want to be noticed. She wants to smell good for herself and that's it. She wants to be, she wants to smell pretty and clean and fresh and lightly floral with a little bit of sweetness. And so she just wears it specifically for herself. She's not worried about sillage, projection, big scent bubbles, none of that. She's just existing in her own, you know, existence. <laughs> So needless to say, I sold it. Even though it was pretty and it had that beautiful marshmallow note in the dry down, it was just simply too light, too much of a skin scent for me to keep in my collection. Now with this one, it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful when you think about just a simplistic, sweet, fruity floral. I really do like this one. Um, it's way more green than some of the other ones. And definitely more green than the oh so fresh. But mm, the sweetness really kicks up and comes out 
in the mid and the base. The opening is where you get most of the violet leaves and they almost wash out the wild berries. But the wild berries are strengthened, I think, in their potency um, because of the woods in the base. So this is pretty. Um, I think they're harder to find because, again, it was launched in 2014. So I'm not recommending that anyone run out and buy this one because I it's my least favorite in the line, like I stated. It is cute. It is cute. So if you are a girl who's unassuming, who just wants to smell good for herself, something that is just, you know, fresh and, you know, just, just get this if you want it. What else can I say? This house to me is a house of, like I said, I think I said this earlier. This is a house of simplistic prettiness. Seriously. When you just have the days where you want to sit around the house or you're just going to go to the grocery store, you're not doing anything that requires a statement that requires attention this is the house for you this is the house for librarians teachers maybe nurses if they work somewhere like not in the er but just like in a place where there isn't like trauma and surgeries going on um maybe door-to-door -door sales women something like that this is just church we all sitting all together in those pews and maybe the church isn't that big or even if it is, you just don't want a whole bunch. Of, you're not trying to outdo nobody with a smell. You know what I'm saying? This literally is really pretty. And that's the thing about them. I like them all for what they are. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend this house to. Yeah, let's talk about it. OK, I wouldn't recommend the house. And I'm sorry. I live on a really, really busy street and today is just popping. You're going to hear cars. You might hear a dog. I may have to lay some music down. I don't know. So I apologize in advance. But let's get back to this house. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this house for a woman with a collection the size of mine. I think that a Marc Jacobs is, uh, Mark, I, think that, I think that Marc Jacobs is best suited for a woman who is just getting started in fragrance, doesn't yet know what she likes, she likes a little bit fruity, a little bit floral, a little fresh, a slight woody hint to it. Perfect. If you have in between one and 20 fragrances, this is a house I'd recommend you to play around with. But unless you're a collector, all of them are not needed. They are so similar because a lot of the same thing, like this house uses violet, like I think in almost every flanker. It's like, you know, so it gets a bit repetitive. Um, and I think that little that little splash of collector in me that I used to have is where I got caught up. I think that I <laughs> who who am I fooling? I think that I just wanted the bottles, and I think I just wanted to have all the flankers for a hot second. I lost my mind, and then when I got them all home, I'm like, okay, there really isn't that much of a, a variance or a difference. In between these lines i think all of the oh so freshers are watered down versions of the regulars i think the dreams are just a lot of people's least favorite and i think the loves are a lot of people's favorite but even in smelling the different flankers of the loves which i love they're all similar that dna is there so with that being said let's jump into the next one the next one we're going to talk about is mark Jacob's Daisy Sunshine Oh So Fresh. That name is doing too much. Okay. Right. So this one here has a top note of pear. This is not some juicy, super sweet, super succulent pear. This is a pear you pick off a tree a week or two earlier than what you're supposed to. So it comes across more green um, of a fruit than juicy, sweet, ripe of a fruit. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't consider this a pair of fragrance, even though it's the top note. That's just me. And then the mid is like mimosa, which you get. And then like heliotrope and cassis. Um, is it cassis? Or cassis? 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 C-A-S-S-I-S. -S -S. Um, and the dry down. I really like this one as it develops. When it first comes out, it's like green. And when you smell it out of the bottle, it's like green. But this turns into something so much more than what the notes tell me. I feel like there's more fruit in it or they've come out with a magic way of allowing you in the opening to open or I'm sorry, to pick the pear before it's ripe. And then it ripens up in the mid and then it's ripe. 
prime for the picking in the base with the sweetness that comes out in this. So this is a fresh clean one. And this is the oh so fresh that I decided to take off of declutter and keep because I liked it more than all of the others. The others were just too watered down. This one, this one I like. This one transforms, again, transforms for me into much more than what these notes say. Because I think the notes to me aren't anything astonishing. If I would have been looking at the notes instead of just trying to grab the whole collection, I probably never would have picked this one. So I'm glad I didn't. But this is just, it's nice. Again, I'm assuming and pretty for women who like that type of vibe. I'm going to make myself use it because I do like it. But I will never, ever ever repurchase the old so freshes again without going and sampling and testing because i j they just don't have enough power for me if i'm being honest the next one we're going to talk about is the regular mark jacobs daisy sunshine so here's the difference between the regular and the also fresh both of these are edts it's just about the packaging so in the top this one has strawberry and violet Told you they like to use violet. Uh, and the mid is marigold. And in the base are wild berries and woody notes. This, this is so good. It's so good. It's so pretty. And the fruits are exquisite. I think that the way that they use the fruits and the florals, like whoever behind the scenes that is doing that combination does it really good. Because none of these outshine each other no matter what flanker you're smelling it's not going to be 90 percent floral and 10 percent fruity there's a perfect blend of the right amount of and types of florals mixed with fruits so i really do enjoy this one to me it's a stronger version of the oh so fresh i know that they say that both of them are edts but this feels like an eau de parfum to me uh an eau de parfum version of the oh so fresh in my head, that's how they work. Longevity wise, that's how they work. None of these are fragrances that are just going to last you 12 hours. So um, if you have a purse big enough to, to deal with this top, then you'll be okay with taking this in your purse and topping up around the four hour mark if you need to. I can absolutely get away with eight hours if I'm if I don't care if anybody else smells me, but I tend to like for people to smell me. So I tend to top up now. I haven't worn this one that I think I've worn this twice, two or three times. Again, I literally get bored with Marc Jacobs unless we're talking about the love collection. I just have to keep it honest with you guys. I got caught up in the collection, the collector fever. And now that I have them, I'm going to have to get around to using them. But again, because I like loud personalities in my perfumes, I've discovered that. This is why I go back to when I said, this is for people starting out in their perfume journey or for people who know that they are subdued by nature and they want their fragrances, the way that they dress, the way they wear makeup, if they wear any at all to simply be minimalistic. This is the type of fragrance I feel a person like that would be drawn to. It's good. It's pretty. It's cute. Um, nothing wrong with it. If the way I'm describing them fits your personality, then get them. The next one we're going to talk about is Marc Jacobs Daisy Kiss. And this might be my favorite opening of the entire Marc Jacobs Daisy line that I've smelled, owned, whether I still have them or not. This one is stunning. The opening is pomelo, apricot, and violet. Of course, there's violet. So this isn't the pomelo that you're used to in Atelier Cologne's Pomelo Paradise. This is a much more subdued or muted pomelo where you get the kick from the pomelo but the apricot makes it more creamy and the violet gives it a little floral touch it's really really pretty i don't know who came up with that combination but i'm telling you it is a stunner to me oh man yes it's so fresh and clean too and i'm really trying to figure out where that comes from with the notes that are in here the mid is peony, which is my favorite floral note. Pink rose, which is also a beauty, and osmanthus. The osmanthus still keeps the same vibe as the apricot by making the pomelo more creamy than super citrusy. And anytime you're dealing with a floral, if you have pink rose versus uh, Bulgarian rose or Turkish rose, this isn't going to be something that's too floral for you, unless you just hate the very existence of flowers. 
Peony is the sweetest, softest, one of the sweetest, softest floors there are. I love it. And so is Pink Rose. They're just not loud. And to have a double dose of something that's more creamy in the Osmanthus and the Apricot, this is just a beautiful, fruity, floral, well-blended, smooth fragrance. In the base, you have Ambraxan, you have musk and you have cedar two of my favorite notes in perfumes and braxton and musk and braxton is like that watery that's what's giving that fresh and clean How, duh that fresh and clean where it smells like a rock that's been in the ocean water or not even ocean water like fresh spring water i love ambroxan i believe that that is what is the leading note in like juliet has a gun out of perfume and glossier you those fragrances that are not really pungent but they blend with you to make a nice, sweet, clean, fresh fragrance. I love it, Braxton. Musk, come on. This isn't a funky, um, pungent musk. This is just beautiful, fresh and clean. Mm. It smells like you just got out of the shower and, you know, you washed your hair. Um, it's almost like a clean shampoo scent. But again, you guys are familiar with me saying this, not the soapy part, just the clean part. Now, I owned the Oh So Fresh version of this as well. I gifted it to my sister. It's almost impossible to find. I think all of these, I think all of these were like released in 2017. I think I mentioned that Twinkle might have been 2014, but I do think it was 2017. I digress. Whenever it was released, I have them. It's fine. So, um, I had the Oh So Fresh version, but it was louder on the florals and therefore was immediately headache inducing for me. But it also had like a cherry note to it, which I really enjoyed. I just couldn't get past the headaches that it caused. So Kiss, again, is my favorite opening, like for the first three seconds. I just, I think it's stunning. I really am impressed by the use of pomelo matched with the apricot and the violet in this. I can't say enough about it. This one is a favorite. Now, this is my second bottle of this one. Um, when, I, when I got it last year, I went through it like it was nothing because I didn't own this many perfumes. The next one that we're going to discuss is my favorite of the line. It is Marc Jacobs Daisy Love. Oh, this is the first one that comes with the sweetness that I like. That extreme sweetness. Not um, a nasty synthetic sweetness, but a beautiful, like, natural fruit sweetness. The top note in this is Cloudberry. I don't even know what that is. But whatever it is, it is fantastic because I know that's what's uh, bringing about the sweetness in this. Guys, it almost smells like candy, like real candy, though. Nothing synthetic. I simply love this so much. The middle note is Daisy, which is very interesting, seeing as how I think this is the first one of the flankers I've seen Daisy actually be in. As you notice when I read the other notes, it's usually Violet that is in all of them. And if I remember correctly from the tons of videos I've watched about the original Daisy, there's no Daisy in it either. The base notes are cashmere, musk, and driftwood. Okay, that's, okay. This is stunning. The cloudberry, the daisy, and the musk. That's what I get. May, at driftwood, like, I have no idea how that smells. I, I don't know. But this one is so pretty. And it gets sweeter on my skin. This stick could never do it justice. If you are going to go test this out, make sure you spray it on your skin. And I'm not even sure if that's legal to do anymore in these stores because of COVID. But baby, this is the best one. So sweet. And then they came out with another one. Marc Jacobs Daisy Love Oh So Sweet. Funny thing about this is I don't technically think that it's sweeter than Daisy Love. I think that it has a different type of sweetness. I love the frosted glass on this one versus the clear one. I think the bottles are just so freaking cute. It starts off with raspberry, blackberry, and bergamot. You absolutely get the sweet fruits in this coming right off the top. Stunning. And that's what I mean by different sweetness because there's also a little hint of soapiness to this one, a little cleaner uh, scent. And I think that happens when you add the tartness from, you know, that can come from raspberries and blackberries with a citrus like that in the top. I love it. It's stunning. In the middle, you have daisy and jasmine. I think that the daisy is more prominent than the jasmine, but the jasmine is adding to the sweetness in this. So it's more of a floral sweetness that starts to take over the fruit sweetness. Again, 
harkening back to me thinking it's a different type of sweetness versus just it being sweet to her. Then in the base, you have sugar, musk, white iris, and woodsy notes. So this is a full-on different take from Daisy Love. Again, I pick up more sweetness on my skin and to my nose in the pure sugary sweetness from the cloudberry that comes across as if it were really a, a tangible fruit. You could just pop into your mouth and it was just the sweetest thing you ever had. Versus this one being such a, a wider range of things that have their own sweetnesses. And that sugar note is really, really good. But when you think about sugar that we process versus sugar that just is naturally in something, you, you know what I mean. So I would not necessarily say that it's sweeter. I just think it's a different kind of sweet. I think I've said that 12 times now, right? Okay, let's keep it moving. The next one we have is Mark Jacobs' Daisy Days. I was underwhelmed when I first got this. The notes read really cute to me. I was like, oh, this is gonna be nice and I'm gonna love it. It was okay. And then I didn't revisit it again until recently when I decided I was gonna do this video or when Kia decided I was gonna do this video. So um, the top note is apricot. The middle note is osmanthus. The base note is amber. At least that's what Fragrantica is posting. We all know, say it with me guys, there are no three note perfumes. Uh, okay. So I really thought that apricot and osmanthus and amber sounded like a perfect match made in heaven for me. And again, I was underwhelmed, which could have had something to do with the fact that I purchased the also oh fresh version at the same time. And I also think like something from Atelier Cologne that day. I don't think I gave it a really fair chance on its own. I wore this recently and was like, oh, this smells more different than all of the rest of them. This is more different than the recent flanker that came out, which I'm going to talk about next. So it is sweet. It is fruity. It's creamy. It's clean. What can I say? It's pretty. And last but not least from the Daisy line, this is the newest release that came out in 2020. It is called Mark Jacobs Daisy Love Spring. This is another one that has only three notes listed. We have pink peony, fig, and fig nectar. It's it's beautiful. It smells just like a greener version of the original Daisy Love. The fig in it is beautiful. It starts off green and then it moves down to being sweet. It's everything I love my fig to be in a perfume. I also used to own Decadence, also Decadent, and Divine Decadence from this house as well. I liked all three of the fragrances, but I just never found myself wanting to wear them. They were pleasant. But I just rather smell them from the bottle than on my skin. And that, that was a waste, just sitting on the shelf. So I sold them. I gifted one away and sold the other two. The last two I want to speak to you about do not have anything to do with the Daisy line itself, but they still come from Mark Jacobs. So the first one I want to talk to you guys about is called Honey. Honey is a beautiful fragrance that has honeysuckle in it, which is one of my favorite notes. But it also has like punch and pear. I'm actually gonna pull up the notes and read them to you because this is a really, really good fragrance. However, and excuse the airplane going by, I told you guys, some days it's just popping over here from traffic to everything else. The top notes are punch, pear, and mandarin orange. The middle notes are honeysuckle, orange, blossom, and peach. And then the base notes are honey, vanilla, and woodsy notes. So we have punch, pear, honeysuckle, and peach, all giving their versions of sweetness which I absolutely love. This is a very pretty scent. I think y'all are tired of me using it. it. This house is just pretty. This is this could be an everyday signature scent, I think, for spring, summer, and fall. Um, to brighten up your winter, you could also, you, you know what, you could wear this 365 days if you want to. It's not the level of sweetness where I think it would turn in the summertime if you have super high heat. I think this is a fragrance that you could actually wear 365 days of the year. I really enjoy this one. I think it's discontinued and sometimes it's hard to come by. So if you can't find it, I'm sorry. Or if it's some astronomical price, listen, I'm not telling you to spend hundreds of dollars on it. I'm just glad I have it in my collection. Last but not least, I want to talk to you guys about their newest release last year that 
is so reminiscent of my childhood. I finally figured out why I was so taken aback by this fragrance. This is one that some people said was underwhelming to them. Those people are probably people who are on the niche train. They're tired of designer scents. Everything is just so blah to them. That's fine. Let them move on. I still love designer scents. I'm still looking for the good celebrity scents that come out, if I'm being honest. Niche is just, you know, it's overrated. It's overpriced. And I'm pretty much over it right now. Maybe I'll fall back into that. But for right now, I'm loving some of the new stuff that's coming out from the designers. I'm not taking it too seriously. And I'm definitely not knocking on doors, begging somebody to charge me four or $500 a bottle. This was expensive enough. However, this takes me back to the late 80s, early 90s, when you're sitting on the porch and the hardest thing you have to figure out each day is how you're going to make a couple of cents, like 25, 50 cents, to go over to the corner store and get you a bag of chips and some Jolly Ranchers, maybe a Chico stick. Um, this is when you're sitting on the porch and you're waiting for your elderly neighbor to come home, hoping that they got a bunch of groceries you can carry upstairs and get a quarter or two. That's what this reminds me of. It's, it reminds me of Jolly Ranchers. Let me give you the notes because if you are just starting your collection or if you only, again, if you only have like 5 to 10, 15 perfumes, I think that this one might be a really good addition. I I love this and I think I'm actually going to use it all. I went through the travel size like it was like immediately and I don't know. I just, I really love the Jolly Rancher vibe, the, the, the childhood vibe this gives me. Okay, here go the notes. Top notes, rhubarb and narcissus. Y'all know I love Delena. You know I'm in love with D&G uh, 3, Liam Petrus right now. So, hmm. Uh, middle note is almond milk. That is so unique. I don't have a ton of fragrances with almond milk in them. And then the base note is cashmere and cedar. It's simplistic yet has a little bit of a different touch. You don't see narcissus in a lot of stuff. You don't see almond milk in a lot of stuff. And you definitely don't see them both together in a lot of stuff. So for me, I'm glad they came out with this. It was something that's really pretty. Right now, the way I'm feeling about it, I feel like it could be a repurchase for me. Again, you guys know I'm not repurchasing anything until I get this under control. But guys, I recommend this. If you like pretty fragrances, yes, you might have to top up at the four to six um, hour mark. But guess what? I don't care because I love the smell of it. So yeah, give me a double dose. No problem. I hope I was as detailed um, as I could be for you guys. I hope I answered the majority of your questions regarding these fragrances. None of these fragrances are beast mode fragrances. To me, the one that lasts the longest happened to be the Daisy Love, the Daisy Love Days and Perfect. Those are the three that last the longest out of all the ones I've talked about, followed really closely by Honey. However, I suggest topping all of them up at the four hour mark just because I love a bigger scent bubble, but that's just me. If you like this video and you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, and select the notification bell so that you never ever miss any of my future uploads. Let's discuss it all in the comments. And until then, bye.